So tomorrow we're going to do a lab to precipitate calcium hydroxide. Um, so that's CaOH2. Um, and we're going to do this by adding solutions of calcium nitrate and solutions of sodium hydroxide. They're both going to be 0.1 molar, so 0.1 molar of calcium ion, and we're adding 0.1 molar of hydroxide. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put five drops of 0.1 molar um, calcium, calcium nitrate in here. And then the next step, you're going to put five drops here, but you're going to add five drops of water. So if I have five drops of 0.1 molar, um, if I have five drops of 0.1 molar and five drops of water, I've doubled the volume, so I'm going to have the molarity. So it goes from 0.1 to 0.5, right? And then in the next situation, I'm going to have, I'm going to take five drops from here, so five drops of 0.05 molar, my bad, five drops of 0.05 molar and five drops of water and put it in here, so it ends up being, I have now doubled the, um, the volume, so I have the molarity again. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. And then I'm going to add my sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to go five drops of hydroxide, 0.1 molar in each one. And as I do that, I'm doubling the volume again, so I'm having the molarity again. So this 0.1 molar is actually going to be 0.05 molar calcium ion and 0.05 molar um, hydroxide ion. Right, because I have both molarities. All of these are actually going to be 0.05 molar hydroxide, because we had 0.1 molar for each um, well, and then we doubled the volume. For each well here, I know it's just going to be half of what we calculated up here. So 0.025 molar calcium and 0.0125 molar calcium. How about I tell you the point of this lab? So the point is, calcium hydroxide is only slightly solu soluble, it's somewhat soluble. So a little bit will dissolve, but not a lot. So this 0.1 molar, if I just mix 0.1 molar calcium with 0.1 molar hydroxide, I would exceed the KSP and I'd see a precipitate. So I expect to see a precipitate at least in the first well, and maybe I'll see it in a few wells, but eventually I'm watering it down every time. I'm making it more, my, more dilute. So I'm lowering the concentration of the ions. Those ions are less likely to collide into each other. They're less likely to form a precipitate. So what I want to do is I want to identify that, well, this is still precipitating, and after that it's dissolved, but I know the KSP is actually going to be somewhere in between these two. So let's, let's pretend, again, that I see a precipitate in both the first and second well, but not in the third. I would want to calculate my KSP, and I know my KSP is going to be equal to the concentration of the calcium times the concentration of the hydroxide squared. Here I know I have more, I've exceeded, so my KSP is actually going to be less than this amount. Here I don't have enough to have a precipitate, so it's probably somewhat less than this. So I know it'll be somewhere between these two KSPs. So we'll calculate what the KSP will be at either situation, and the actual one will be somewhere in between. So let's see, I'll plug this in. I have 0.05 molar for the calcium, and the hydroxide was 0.05 as well, but 0.05 squared. So I'm gonna have 0.05 times 0.05 is 0.0025. And then I'm going to go times 0.05 again. So 1, 2, 5, and then I'm going to need two more zeros. Okay. So, oops, one more zero. Okay. So I would get my KSP is equal to um, 1.25 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay. So. Then we try again with this last well, and we know the KSP is going to be somewhere in between. All right. My computer's not working, so I did that on the board. Hopefully you can see it.